Hey guys and welcome to This Is Now. You may have seen there's been a little bit of drama when it comes to China and gaming lately. Now for those of you living under a rock, over the past several months protests have raged on in Hong Kong over human rights and censorship in China. Now up until 1997, Hong Kong was actually a British colony dating all the way back to 1841 and up until that point it was under British rule. When Britain relinquished Hong Kong back to China, even though it is still technically part of China, it now has a different set of laws in the mainland which gives Hong Kong more autonomy but more importantly much more freedom, including freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. And this became known as one country two systems. The protests initially broke out when a bill was proposed that would allow extradition of suspected criminals to mainland in China, where they would no longer be protected by Hong Kong's much more democratic policies. People feared that China would use this bill as a way to further censorship by targeting journalists or political activists, and since then the protests have become frequent and violent, with a number of cases of police brutality and, well, it's just, yeah. Even after the bill was rescinded in September, the protests have become much more so about freedom of speech and anti-censorship and, you know, overall human rights. So you might be wondering, what exactly does any of this have to do with gaming? Now you might be familiar with BlizzCon, where Activision Blizzard typically announced all of their major new games that are coming out, and last year's BlizzCon was considered pretty controversial. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> Uh, Regardless, this year's event is much, much more controversial. And there's already even protests happening over Blizzard's, shall we say, controversial support of China a few weeks ago. After their Grandmasters Hearthstone tournament, in a post-victory interview, the player Blitzchung promoted his support from Hong Kong's pro-democracy protesters, stating, liberate Hong Kong, the revolution of our times, which, uh, well, let's just say didn't go over too well. Blizzard immediately took away Chung's prize money and banned him from tournaments for a year, claiming that he violated competition rules. Oh, and for good measure, they also banned the two streamers that were interviewing Chung, for literally no apparent reason. Blizzard faced a massive amount of backlash from the community, with many users calling for a boycott of Activision Blizzard and all of their games. Many took to social media to show themselves uninstalling Overwatch or unsubscribing to World of Warcraft. It also didn't help that there were some suspicious authentication errors on their servers, preventing people from actually deleting their accounts. Even Blizzard's own employees joined in on the boycott, staging a walkout, including Mark Kern, one of WoW's original developers. Kern tweeted, quote, We are in a situation where unlimited communist money dictates our American values. We censor our games for China, we censor our movies for China. Now game companies are silencing voices for freedom and democracy. Yeah, okay, so I know that you clicked on a video talking about gaming, but this Ooh. got real and it got real quick, didn't it? Ultimately, Blizzard did reduce Blitzchung's ban and reinstated his prize money, but that didn't really do much to sway public opinion. So why does Activision Blizzard, an American company, care so much about China's affairs? Well, it's actually simple and yet not so simple at the same time. For one, China is the largest gaming market in the world. Now, China is still a communist government, and unlike democratic and capitalist-driven countries, business is far more regulated by the government. So if a company, oh, I don't know, let's say Activision Blizzard wants to do business in China, they really do need that government approval. Now, if Blizzard was to say, I don't know, offend China by streaming something about Hong Kong, then they could easily be blacklisted from the market with the flip of a switch and lose millions of dollars in the process. And of course, Blizzard is in no way alone with this problem. The NBA recently came under similar scrutiny after the Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey tweeted out support for Hong Kong, which angered the Chinese government and most of China. This led to the Rockets losing sponsorships, and Tencent Sports suspended all of their broadcasts of the Rockets games, as well as losing all of the merchandise from being pulled throughout of all of China. That's a lot of things. That's, yeah. It's one tweet, one tweet, and uh, goodbye China. Goodbye all your merch, goodbye your streaming rights. Now the Rockets owner as well as the NBA have issued these standard statements you would expect, that Maury's opinions are his own, that he doesn't speak for the team, of course he deleted the tweet, and that makes sense because there are around 600 million basketball fans in China. The NBA can't really afford to lose that market. Or well maybe they can afford to lose it, they just don't want to lose the millions and millions of dollars that are attached. It's almost like companies 
really like money or something. But it's not just the world that's trying to appeal to China. China's been shaping the world in its own vision. So the way that it has worked in the past is that content created in Western countries, whether it's gaming, movies, TVs, whatever, had to go through a content process known as regulation and was altered to comply with Chinese standards so they could be released in that market. Such as when Game of Thrones aired in China and they removed like half the scenes from the finale, which made it make no sense. Although to be fair, I don't think it made that much more sense with the finale. That was really bad. Real bad. <laughs> Man, it's Game of Thrones is over. That's sad now. Nowadays, China is trying to streamline the process and not by loosening regulations, but by buying game developers or by straight up producing Western movies such as Terminator Dark Fate, as well as like half the other blockbusters around right now. As we mentioned in our Battle Royale comparison, Tencent Games is the largest game developer in the world. They own League of Legends, of course the largest eSport game in the world, as well as a ton of stakes and huge game developers such as Epic, Ubisoft, and dun dun dun, Activision Blizzard. See, it all comes back around at the end. Their parent company, Tencent Holdings, is one of the largest companies in the world. They own things such as the massively popular WeChat, which if you live in China, is pretty much a necessity. There's social media on there, there's messaging, there's payments. I mean, it is incredibly hard to live without it. And Tencent also handles the streaming rights for things such as music, movies, TV. I mean, they have their hand in almost everything. About 700 total companies as of, well, right now. It'll probably be 800 by the time we finish this video. Now here's a fact that legitimately blew my mind. Tencent is so large that they account for 46% of all revenue in China and 10% of the global video game market. Now can you just pause for a second and think about this? 46% of the revenue of the entire country of China. I mean, I guess a large part of that is just because WePay is so popular that people use it. By that logic, maybe like Visa is like a huge chunk of the actual revenue of the United States, but still, that is an insane figure. Now on the gaming front, they own Wii Games, which is the Chinese equivalent of Steam, with 200 million active users each month. Now while Steam has some stupid number like a billion accounts, it actually only has around 90 million active users, or less than half of Wii Games. While Tencent might hold a very small stake in a company such as Activision Blizzard or Ubisoft, only typically around 5%, they still have a lot of influence over these companies, and that's because they hold all of the distribution rights for these games in China. So while Tencent might not have an official say, because they do control such a huge portion of the market, a lot of these companies feel like they have to comply. A good example for this is Rainbow Six Siege, where the global release of the game was tweaked to comply with Chinese game regulations, aka censorship, as opposed to the past, where Ubisoft probably would have just created a separate Chinese version of the game, which is typically what developers have done. However, times are changing, and well, it's kind of hard to argue the largest gaming market in the world isn't worth paying attention to. But now it seems that Tencent is set on shifting the global gaming market to their ideal business model, which is all free to play. Back in 2000, China placed a 15 year ban on foreign made game consoles for fear of children becoming addicted to video games. Ooh. Although it's kind of backwards when you think about it because nowadays they pretty much just want people to play free to play games, which obviously are probably way worse. But regardless, it's fine. No one knew video games were a thing in 2000, right? Now since the major consoles were all from foreign manufacturers, this effectively meant that there was no console gaming in China. Now there were some loopholes, like a couple of Chinese knockoffs, but actually it was Nintendo who partnered with a local Chinese company named IQ in order to sell their consoles. Nintendo rebranded all of their products, so you had the IQ GBA, the IQ DSi, and the IQ Player, which is essentially an N64, but of course it was reclassified as a plug and play system. The entire console was housed in the controller and then plugged into the TV, so it wasn't technically a console. But even with systems like these available, gamers gravitated toward PC gaming, making up the vast majority of the market even to this day. The only problem was that most people couldn't actually afford to buy their own PCs. So a lot of gamers ended up going to internet cafes where players could rent PCs by the hour to play. Now in most countries, internet cafes were big and then they became a quick fad. 
but in China, their popularity has actually grown. And let's face it, you're probably not going to buy games for a PC you don't own, and thus it's so much easier to jump into a free-to-play title such as League of Legends or Dota 2, and they quickly became the most popular form of gaming. Since game developers needed a way to monetize all of these games, that's when they started to add the familiar free-to-play elements like pay to win and loot boxes, and of course you can check out a whole episode on that right here. Now, Tencent has been making a push to include those elements in pretty much every IP they own stake in. Lastly, companies like Blizzard and Epic thrive on the growth of esports markets. In 2017, the League of Legends Championship had over 106 million viewers, which is more than even the Super Bowl, and a whopping 98% of those viewers were from China. Now, while Fortnite and Hearthstone are nowhere near those numbers for viewers, the industry has been growing steadily over the last couple years, and these companies need the Chinese market to thrive. Just at what cost? So the thing is here is that these companies are companies. They have to make money. And China being a massive gaming market really does require a lot of companies to sort of pick their poison, I suppose. But I think this is one of the very few times there's actually been a huge blowback, right? Blizzard has never seen, or really none of these gaming companies have ever seen this kind of pushback. And it makes sense because at some point you can't have it both ways. You either have lots of profit and lots of money and you work with China, or you kind of don't. And I don't know how long the sort of middle ground of trying to keep everyone happy is actually going to last. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And of course, you can check out some of the other episodes of This Is Here. Now, if you will excuse us, I'm going to enjoy being banned in China now because we made this video. Although I guess to be fair, we didn't ever post YouTube's not in China, so I think we were fine already, but uh, 